Happy Mother's Day, all you beautiful ladies. <clears throat> uh, I want to mention that as you ladies leave today, be sure to get a flower on your way out. And out in the um, gathering area, if you want to do pictures with your family uh, in front of the backdrop, Kevin will be out there, or your family can take the pictures with their, their phones. So I wanted to get that out of the way. But for all you moms today, I just want to speak a blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Today, I am very blessed to have my mom, my son, my daughter-in-law, and my grandson here today. <laughs> I didn't know that my son and his family were going to be here, so that really made my day. Thank you. <clears throat> so this morning, my mom texted me about me being up here today, because this is not my forte. And she said, I've been praying this over you and speaking this over you. Ephesians 6, 19 says, pray also for me, that whenever I speak, my words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. So for me to be up here fearlessly is because of all the prayers of the people that have been speaking over me and because of what my mom has been praying over me. So don't ever take it lightly when somebody says they're praying for you or they've spoken a scripture over you. It's very powerful. And of course I can't start out my message without a couple of mom stories <laughs> and Grammy stories. So I have a really, really sweet message about when my son was little. I've got two, actually. But there was a time when he was wanting something, wanting an, an object for a while, and I surprised him with it. And when he got it, he was so excited. He said, you're the best mom I've ever had. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and then when he was younger, he used to go with my parents a lot to Branson, Missouri, and there was a family that had a music show and they went quite often and they would go to the show every night they were there and he knew every word to every song and my mom made him outfits to match the outfits that they wore during their show and he would sit in the front row with his little microphone and he would sing every song with them and they brought him up on stage one night and let him sing with them they gave him a microphone and let him sing and then after intermit or at intermission, they let him sign autographs. <laughs> and so I got an autograph for my son. And then my grandson, <laughs> we have a whole book of Izzy isms. His name's Israel, we call him Izzy. But one of the things, when I first started changing my hair color, <laughs> We were attempting to go purple, but it turned out more burgundy. And he was looking at it one day, and I said, well, Bub, do you like my hair? And he said, well, it makes me think of red velvet cake. <laughs> oh, and probably the most famous Izzy story. We were in the backyard playing wiffle ball, and when he would bat, he would run all the bases, of course. So he wanted me to run all the bases. And I said, Bub, I'm too old for that. I'll run the bases in my last at bat. So as I'm up to bat, he starts commentating. And the pitch comes in, and it's a ball. And the second pitch. And she hits a, a line drive out to the left center field. So he's just commentating as I'm going around the bases. And as I get to third base, he says, and the old lady gets tagged out at third. <laughs> so 
sorry, Bev, you'll never live that one down. <laughs> that story got told at work one time, and one of my coworkers overheard it, and to this day, he calls me O.W. for old woman. <clears throat> well, today I'm going to talk to you about honor and its reward. But please understand that the subject of honor is so encompassing, I can only touch on a small portion of it. And I hope it's the basics that give you a good foundation to build on for honor. Honor's mentioned 355 times in the scripture. So that just indicates how important it really is and how much weight it carries. We're good at saying that we honor moms and grandmas on their special day and dads and grandpas on their special day. And we honor men and women for their accomplishments and veterans for their service. But do we really understand what honor truly is? It's a quality that's mis often misunderstood. Many people think that it's simply being polite and respectful. But honor goes much deeper than that. It's an outward flow from a heart that fears and reveres God. The fear of the Lord produces true honor in our hearts for those whom God cares about and loves. Webster's Dictionary defines honor as to revere, respect, esteem, which means to have high regard for. And in the scriptures, the Greek, Greek word for honor is timi, and it means to value, to see as weighty and precious. And for some perspective, honor in the Old Testament is the word kabod, and it means valuable, precious, weighty, such as gold. And the New Testament is tameos, meaning reverence, favorable regard, and personal value. And while honor is an internal attitude of respect and reverence, it should also be accompanied by appropriate action. And it can be displayed in action, in words, and even in thoughts. But all true honor originates from the heart. So just an example of honor in action. The first one that came to my mind was Mary, who wept over the feet of Jesus. She was so honoring towards him. She couldn't stop crying, and she wet his feet with her tears, and she dried them with her hair, and then she anointed his feet with the most expensive perfumed oil. And that story is, down, is found in Luke 7, 37 and 38. We were on a missions trip. We've been on many, but we were on one in particular, and we had to walk to and from the place where we were staying to the work site, and it was quite a walk. And um, one day it was very hot, very humid. Um, I had had on my work boots and two pair of socks, and by the time we got back from the work site to where we were staying, um, all of our feet were just killing us. And I sat down in a chair and, and mentioned that my feet were hurting me. And one of the ladies that was on the trip with us came over and knelt down, took off my boots, and took off both pairs of my sweaty socks. To me, that is the, probably the most honoring thing that has been done for me that I can remember. And it was from her heart. She did it for someone that God loves and cares about. And an example of word, honoring with your word. If you're familiar with the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel 3, these three young men were taken into captivity. They were removed from their families. They were removed from their land, from everything they knew, all of their dreams, to serve King Nebuchadnezzar as eunuchs. King Nebuchadnezzar resurrected a golden image, and he ordered 
all of Babylon to bow down and worship that, that golden image. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego chose not to do that. They chose to honor God. And when they were brought before the king, who was furious with them for disobeying his orders, and even after they were threatened with being thrown into a fiery furnace, they still addressed him as, O oh, great king, we cannot do such a thing. And he said they would be thrown into the fiery furnace. And they said, oh, your majesty. Instead of being angry or copying an attitude, being disrespectful, they held him still in that highest place of honor. Their responses and their actions were an outward flow from a heart that feared and reveres God. Another way to honor is through our thoughts. And you know, our, the word says that our actions actually start with our thoughts. As a man thinks, so he is, says Proverbs 23, 7. And the one that I thought of for um, the honor through thought was King David. King Saul loved David as a son. And then he became jealous of David when he realized that David would succeed him as king. So he began to pursue David and try to kill him. He pursued him relentlessly with the intention of doing away with him. And while he was pursuing David many times, David and his men had the opportunity to kill Saul or to bring harm to him. However, David refused to do it. He refused to allow his men to lay a hand on the king. Because of his honor for Saul as the king. And even though Saul had wrong motives and was trying to kill him, David still honored him. Our honoring actions, words, and thoughts can be as simple as holding open a door for someone, helping someone load their groceries in their car, telling someone you love their smile or that they're doing a great job and you appreciate them when they hand you your food through the drive through window. And instead of complaining about a bad service at a restaurant, pray a blessing and prosperity over the establishment. Tip your waiter or waitress extra, even if you get bad service. They're having a bad day. You have bad days. Remember, your actions are honoring and you're representing the kingdom of heaven. True honor also carries with it great rewards. Rewards that God desires for us to have full rewards, it says. 2 John 1.8 says, Look to yourselves that you do not lose things that we work for, but that you may receive a full reward. And I looked up the definition of a reward, and it's a consequence that happens to someone as a result of worthy or unworthy behavior. And an example of the reward for Mary her reward was Jesus prophesied that her good and beautiful act of honor would be lauded everywhere the gospel would reach from generation to generation forevermore. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not only when they were thrown into that fiery furnace, not a hair on their head was singed, nor did they smell like smoke. They were promoted over an entire province of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar declared before the whole kingdom that there was no other God who could deliver like that. And he decreed a death order for anyone who spoke against God. And for David. He's one of the greatest kings to ever rule. He's called a man after God's own heart. 
and is one of the most well-known figures in the Bible, whose legacy of honor will remain until the end of time as we know it. So honor is an essential key to receiving from heaven. It's contingent upon the posture of your heart before God. It's not about what someone has said. It's not about your opinion. It's not about what they've done. It's about your heart before the Lord. 1 Samuel 2.30 says, Those who honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Not only is God a rewarder, but he loves to reward us. Psalm 57, 2 says, I cr will cry out to the God most high who performs on my behalf and rewards me. Proverbs eleven thirty one, 31, the righteous will be rewarded in the earth. Proverbs 13, 21, righteous people will be rewarded with good things. And Hebrews 11.6, without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So I've worked for a company for over 20 years now and about um, 10 years ago, a position came open, and I was not qualified for the position. However, Molex rewrote the requirements for that position so that they could move me into that position. That's honor. A lot of times we don't think we deserve honor because we know ourselves, we know our thoughts, we know what we've said about people, we know what we've done that maybe other people don't know about. But Father God knows our heart. As I was praying earlier this week about it, about being asked to be up here and was just asking the Lord to forgive me for some things and reminding him of some things that I had done that I felt disqualified me to be up here. And he said, what are you talking about? I don't know any of those things you're mentioning. I can't see them. They're under the blood. He knows my heart. I still have flesh. I still have an attitude. I still get angry. I still say, say things I shouldn't say. But really, that's not my heart. It's just an instant reaction sometimes from my flesh. But God honors our heart. And he knows my heart is always for him. Always. And I always want to be honoring, not just of him, but of all of you. I want to be so honoring of others that they don't even see me. They just see Jesus. They see his goodness. They see his love. They see themselves as he sees them. The Bible's emphasis on honoring others has everything to do with the command to honor God. God created us in his image, and when we honor others, no matter who they are, we honor God. And as we honor him, we increase his esteem in the world and attest to his ultimate value. Accurately acknowledge, acknowledging who people are recognizes their God-given identities that will position us to give them what they deserve and receive the gift of who they are in our lives. So when we honor others, it benefits us too. It doesn't just build them up. It doesn't feed their ego, but it calls out the gold in them. It lets them know they're valuable. And when people feel valued and they know that others appreciate them, 
that's a benefit for us. You have better attitudes. You have better service at the restaurants. You have peace in your home. Some other areas of honor that really need to be emphasized, and I strongly encourage you to study these, are honoring your parents. The scripture says, honor your father and mother, that it may go well with you, and you may have a long life. You may not have had the best parents, but if you honor them by not speaking poorly of them to others, by not pointing out every fault, by not blaming every trouble that you have on the way you were raised, the Lord is going to honor that. Spouses. Spouses, if you honor one another, the blessing of the Lord is beyond all you can imagine in your relationships, in your marriage, in all that you attempt to do. Without honor in our marriage, I don't think we'd be married right now. It's probably true of a lot of you. You don't always agree on everything. A lot of times you have very different personalities, very different viewpoints. But if you honor your spouse, they'll begin to honor you. And then your differences become a powerful force when joined together. And you can accomplish so much more in an honoring relationship than in a feuding relationship. Honoring our children. A lot of times we don't even think about honoring our children. We think more about bringing them up in the ways of the Lord and disciplining them. But when we honor our children, you are building up their character. You are raising up mighty men and women of God that are the next generation that are going to take over this country one day and run it for us. I want my children and my grandchildren to know who they are in Christ and to be the best that God has called them to be. Spiritual leaders, Jason and Shelley. Jason and Shelley have asked us to do certain things in this building. Even if we don't agree with it, we need to honor their requests. We need to honor the fact that they have made so many sacrifices for us. So many sacrifices for others to come into this place and be welcomed and fed and nurtured and come alongside government officials. There's a tough one. Even if you don't agree with who's in office, you still honor the position that they're in. God has placed them in that position. It may not seem like it, but he has put them in that position. So you honor the position and your peers, all those around you, your coworkers, the people you worship with. Somebody may not worship the same style you do. That's okay. They're probably thinking, well, they're kind of weird too. They sing too loud. They dance funny. You know what? Honor the fact that they're honoring the Lord. It doesn't matter what it looks like. They're honoring the Lord. You need to be honoring of them. There may be a day when the Lord asks you to dance kind of weird in front of everybody. Or he might ask you to sing really loud, off key. You know what? Sometimes people ask the Lord for confirmations that he's real. And they'll ask for something way off the wall because they don't think he'll do it. They don't think he's real. And then when he does it, they're amazed. There is a God. There is a God that cares about them. And they know that because he has done the very strangest thing that they've asked him to do to prove himself trustworthy. 
So if God asks you to do something really crazy and weird and out there, do it. Some of the resources that I use today for this message are from um, the book, A Life That God Rewards by Bruce Wilkerson, Honors Reward by John Bevere, and A Culture of Honor by Danny Silk. I've read The Culture of Honor two or three times now, and every time I read it, I'm like, oh Lord, please forgive me. I have not been honoring in that, that area. I learned something new every time I read it. And as you, many of you know, Randy and I have, um, are, are involved in Higher Ground School of Ministry. And our second year curriculum actually focuses on cultivating a culture of honor. And this book is one of them that we use. I highly recommend if you are struggling with honor, read this book. Honor is our most valuable currency. It's the most valuable currency we can give. When we show honor to others, we invest in something that will never lose value. So let us always be mindful of how we can and do show honor to others. In doing so, we will obtain favor from both men and God as we pursue our purpose in life. And as I was asking the Lord, how, how do you want me to end this, Lord? What, what can I say to your, your people, Lord, that you have for them today? And the Lord showed me. He walked up on stage, and he had this huge flag, and he just started waving it over the congregation. And it, it looked something similar to like one of our state flags. It wasn't fancy, it wasn't ornate. It was just kind of common. And he said that this flag is a banner of heaven being flown over you that represents the honor that all of heaven waves over you. Not only are you honored here on earth, by each other, but all the more by the hosts of heaven. Do I not sing over you? Do you not know that your name is written on the palm of my hand? That the angels rejoice over every heart that repents? No greater honor is bestowed on you than the honor that flows from heaven. So that's what the Lord has for you today. You are honored in this place. You're honored in this earth. But more importantly, you're honored in the kingdom of heaven. So in closing today, I just want to open up the altars. And if any of you want to come and pray, if you want us to pray with you, we'll have some prayer partners down at the front. Um, but be, please feel free to come and pray. And today, just be honored. Know that you are honored. Mothers, know that you are honored for all that you have done for us. As Randy said, you've raised us up. You've sacrificed for us. And we appreciate you. Thank you.